Photographic Composition, Lecture 12, Portfolio, Part 3. Loretta Lux is a German photographer who came to prominence um, around the beginning of the 21st century, and her work is characterized by um, mostly pastel colors, very muted colors, um, and subject matter and uh, a technique that look more like um, really painstakingly made um, color drawings or um, really well detailed um, paintings as opposed to photographs, but they are all photographic in, in, in nature. Um, when you go to the website, um, click on one of the uh, portfolios uh, and an array of images will come up. Click on any of them and um, you're presented with individual images. Um, her subject matter is very often uh, characterized by, it's, it's largely people, a lot of children. Um, their heads tend to be larger than one would expect them to be on a, on a normal uh, person. Um, and each of them has a, a very specific kind of character that's uh, consistent from one of her images to the next. Images are grouped by, um, as I say, different port, uh, portfolios or um, uh, series, uh, and there are consistencies, but there are also um, divergences as it go from one portfolio into another. The lighting is always very soft. And um, there's a potential for them to be cloying, but um, her approach is, uh, I think, more interesting than, than that would suggest. There's an edge to them. I can't say that um, one image necessarily uh, blends into the next or, or has um, elements about it that connect it to the images that have preceded it, except for um, underlying themes and, and um, a way of uh, presenting um, the subject matter. And um, she's not immune to her own um, photographic devices and self-portrait. Peggy Sirota is a uh, commercial photographer um, who does a variety of different kinds of work. Um, she's best known for her fashion um, and celebrity work. And um, I chose to look at uh, a number of pages from her, uh, from the celebrity part of her, um, uh, her site. And um, how she's chosen to um, present the work is to show, in this case, a cover um, there are a series of covers that are in this section with uh, the subject matter. And then um, she goes on to include images that are, for all intents and purposes, outtakes from the shoots, um, uh, or at least other shoots with the, um, each of the celebrities. So here we have Louis C.K. Um, in a, a lighter moment than, well, I shouldn't say a lighter moment, but a, a, a very different um, uh, moment than... Uh, was featured on the cover of GQ, as is the case here. And um, clearly she does a fair amount of work for GQ. We have the celebrity. And here we have the celebrity doing something zany. Again, GQ. A fairly straightforward um, portrait uh, of the actor. And then one a little less straightforward and more sort of action-oriented. And um, I'm sure she has her own reasons for doing this kind of thing, but um, 
very often in appealing to or attempting to appeal to uh, potential clients, um, photographer will often take um, the work that's already been um, sort of given the stamp of approval by being on a cover or within a spread in a, a magazine. And then um, the alternate views are included to show that um, there's more than just um, an ability to create covers um, that uh, the editorial within a magazine can be populated with, with their pictures because they know how to work with people. Tim Griffith is uh, one of the um, better known architectural photographers working today. And um, he has photographed most of the work that you'll see in his, uh, on his uh, website is of contemporary uh, architecture. Um, and one of the things that he does particularly well is to first find a uh, defining point of view from which to uh, photograph um, a building and then um, figure out the best time of day to shoot it and how to frame it at the same time. So there are a number of elements, um, all of which he does really well. Um, his website, as with uh, others with the, that we're seeing here, um, tries to show a variety of points of view um, so that it's not just building, 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 building interior, building interior, um, but looking up and looking down and um, uh, looking at different kinds of buildings um, is all part of the process. And that he is willing to um, go to considerable lengths to find um, alternate views of, of buildings um, is very much a selling point. And here we have um, a kind of twisting tower um, that uh, is featured in this one image, but as um, a building among many. Um, and here we see it in a couple of details. And again, the presentation, this diptych, um, is uh, an important part of his presentation. And here we see some of the same kind of technique uh, where he has included a detail um, next to uh, an overall image of um, this building in its context. And again, as seen with other buildings, um, and then the image on the left and then on the right, um, seen from uh, a, a neighborhood uh, next door to, uh, to this particular building, so that it's seen in context as well. And uh, one might be considered um, more appropriate, let's say, to um, a high style magazine, and the one on the right um, is something that might appeal more to uh, a grittier, more editorial uh, viewpoint. And here again, in context, and then um, as a detail, very unusual building, to say the least. And then the, um, the building, also in context, but it photographed at night where it's clear that it's, it's, uh, it has a, a totally unique um, uh, aspect to it. Todd Hito is a um, fine art photographer. Um, he was a protege of uh, Michael Kenna's, and, but whose work is uh, very different from um, Kenna's. And um, I chose one of the uh, projects in his portfolio. Um, and uh, it features a number of images um, taken of, uh, I believe it's areas of, of Ohio, um, where he's from, um, in various states of weather, and also um, at night. His point of view is very personal, um, and uh, his process is to bring us along on his journeys.
One of the things that he's particularly known for is um, images taken at night, which are, tend to be very evocative. In some cases, the subject matter is almost in, um, impossible to see or very close to it. But there's enough tone here to really get a sense of what we're looking at and what appears to be like an, a UFO on the horizon. A number of these have been taken through um, the windows of, of um, his car. And then in the middle of it, he includes a photograph of the back of a woman's head. 